welcome. So, we have uh, already discussed the link power budget and obviously related to the noise and interference. And now we are going to discuss about the propagation channel through which this signal pass through. So, next couple of uh, uh, classes we will continue our discussion on the propagation channel what happens. This is a big subject. There are a lot of research papers and PhDs have been done on that. So, we will take up uh, not the physics part of it, we will assume the physics part of it and uh, what is the effect we will try to see and uh, our main interest will be how to mitigate those effect for a communication purpose. So, let us start. Satellite communication system propagation. In this couple of lectures, we will cover the effects of the signal propagation through mainly two uh, spheres that is ionosphere and troposphere. And then we will see the some models for attenuation prediction and then what should be the different mitigation techniques so that we can do proper uh, communication with a good quality of service. Now, ionosphere. Ionosphere is uh, from our school days we are aware that uh, uh, there are high above the earth surface of the order of uh, 700 kilometers above that is 1000 kilometer or even higher above that the uh, oxygen molecule molecules the break up due to sun's effect and we have free electrons and uh, ions that move around and uh, since they are charged particles obviously uh, they try to follow the magnetic uh, uh, magnetic uh, uh, magnetic effect of the earth that is uh, from uh, from the equator to the pole the magnetic magnetic lines they will follow depending on the type of charge so therefore uh, during the day uh, the density of these ions and electrons vary at different places and obviously, uh, by the time uh, uh, initially they are, uh, they are generated with the sunlight and then by the time they travel higher latitudes northern and southern, uh, sunset occurs and slowly they recombine. So, near the pole there is not much of effect, maximum effect is uh, near the equator, that equatorial region and mid latitude region, some effects are there. But let, let us just see some summarize the effects what is seen there. The electromagnetic wave which comes from the satellite or which is going from the ground to the satellite, they interact with these free electrons in this ionosphere and the effect of interaction is uh, proportional to the inverse square of frequency 1 by f square. This is very important for us uh, when we do low frequency communication of the order of when I say low frequency it is of the order of uh, megahertz and tens and hundreds of megahertz, then the uh, effect is dominant. Whereas, as we go up in the spectrum in the gigahertz region, particularly in satellite communication, most common uh, is a KU band which is above uh, 10 gigahertz. So, at 10 gigahertz, the effect obviously will be very low. So, some of them are uh, effects are it will change the propagating wave velocity. So, when the signal passes through this ionosphere, because of the interaction it will go not with the velocity of free space which we assume velocity of light it will slow down this slow down will have a some delay effect uh, for general communication what we are talking uh, that is for video uh, reception video broadcasting data communication uh, or, or uh, audio communication uh, this delay is uh, it's tolerable but when we introduce this delay for calculating something else which is done in uh, in the case of uh, satellite navigation satellite based navigation then this delay uh, is very important this delay through this delay we calculate the range but anyway even if uh, some effect is there uh, that at higher frequency as i mentioned that since it is 1 by f square this propagation delay is a very very small effect it also changes the polarization. The electric field vector will get rotated, um, which is called Faraday rotation, and 
at the at 10 gigahertz it is about 1.1 degree very very small. So, because of this depolarization whatever uh, the residual vector which remains uh, in the intended polarization uh, that is reduced by a very small amount. So, the uh, polarization depolarization effect of course, it will create certain cross polarization component which is also very small amount because of the small degree of rotation. But this is just a typical number it varies as I said from place to place uh, time to time depending on the total electron content or the density of the electrons through which the signal is passing through. Uh, there is some absorption which we can call it at emission uh, this is at 10 gigahertz it is very very small you can see it is uh, of the order of 10 to the minus 4 dB very very small. And uh, there is some effect which is called scintillation scintillation is a small time effect in a small region just like a uh, like a um, bubble going up in a liquid uh, bubble is moving around in a liquid it you can think of a similar uh, concept bubble is actually air and uh, or gash inside a liquid here it is a dense electrons uh, uh, free electrons uh, localized uh, is formed because of some perturbation and they they again uh, disperse. So, when they uh, remain nearby and uh, through that if the signal passes then it will have uh, this uh, effects dominating like polarization will change the absorption will change uh, and this absorption will uh, vary peak to peak uh, 4 dB possible at uh, 10 giga. So, this is a very short term fading and this may be of interest to us, uh, but this has to be countered. But in general the effect at 10 gigahertz is very very low for, for the ionosphere. So, we can uh, we can uh, we can neglect this effect for the time being, but for detailed calculation obviously it will come into picture. Now, let us see what happens in the uh, troposphere here is a uh, just a, a sketch uh, picture uh, where satellite is shown and there are certain clouds and rain formation and then rain precipitation is taking place and as if a signal is passing from satellite to earth or earth to satellite here there is earth to satellite arrow is given it can be any direction signal is passing through this impairment which is not the clear sky no clear gash is there it is water vapor as well as water itself it is there. Now, that will create obviously, some attenuation uh, here I have listed only a as a atmospheric attenuation and the received power say from satellite is coming uh, uh, or from earth it is going to satellite whichever direction the received power will be the E i r p from the other direction the transmit side and receive antenna gain and that uh, free space loss or what we used to call path loss and that is supposed to be clear sky and when it passes through these type of disturbances like a cloud uh, and rain then it will go it will have certain attenuation. So, power received will be less. So, d b equations are very simple uh, that is p r is equal to e i r p plus uh, the receive antenna again minus the path loss or free space loss minus the attenuation this is shown as a simply atmospheric attenuation, but then in addition to att attenuation there is a polarization change also the water will absorb the water content or raindrops will absorb some electromagnetic energy also it will rotate the polarization because of that also there will be some loss. Let us look at those things uh, uh, slightly detail let us see uh, before that let us look at the total uh, communication link in a satcom in a very brief way let us say it is a packet communication. So, packets are queued at the transmit station and uh, based on the multiple access requirement the packets are um, um, multiple access modulated and if necessary it is coded modulated and coded for this code is for error correction coding not the baseband coding and then type of multiple access for many people accessing. We will discuss multiple access and other things later just you here you just take this word that is there is a multiple users are accessing in this case I have drawn only one user. So, they have to share the transponder that is why something called multiple access the sharing business is there. So, these are a certain blocks subsystem in the transmit station it is uh, up converted amplified and put into the put into the atmosphere 
troposphere, it is going to the satellite. Here, the transponder or the satellite I am showing as a simply amplifier. It is actually a frequency translator also, uh, it is amplified, but while going up this signal from the transmitter to the transponder, it uh, has certain free space loss or path loss and also in the uplink there is certain attenuation as we have shown in the uh, last uh, uh, slide that the attenuation uh, could be dominant when uh, it is rain or raindrops or water type of things. We will see more details of that there is some uplink attenuation and the transponder it is signal is amplified uh, frequency translated and downlink frequency from the transponder to the receive station it comes through again downlink free space loss and downlink attenuation. Since the frequencies are different, uh, even if uh, the, uh, the stations transmit and receive stations are co-located or nearby located, um, uh, the downlink attenuation will be uh, different because as the frequency is different. And uh, if the stations are far away, of course, the free space loss and whether the downlink is facing the same uh, amount of water contained or different uh, amount of gas or ionosphere the downlink A down will be different than A up. Then it is received at the receive station, it is down converted, uh, passed to a demodulator and channel decoder and corresponding multiple access uh, subsystem takes care. So, at the input of the demodulator, we have this carrier to noise ratio, which we were discussing in last couple of uh, lectures. The carrier to noise ratio depending on that demodulator function will be there how, mu how much uh, good quality or how many errors that will come in depending on this signal to noise ratio or carrier to noise ratio C by N. And then after that let us say there are certain packets formed and those packets will be put into the queue to send to the user. So, corresponding to the bit error rate there will be based on the size of the packet there will be packet error rate which will comes out and based on the packet error rate the user will look for the quality of service, what how many packets are in error. This is a very general, very briefly we talked about one, one link of simplified satellite communication. Now, service quality relation with C by N before proceeding further, just, just let us just uh, clear certain things that is for packet communication link, link quality parameter is generally taken as packet error rate or packet error ratio, the R's generally we call it packet error rate, but it is actually ratio, how many are in error out of the total number of packets received. So, it is a P E R. Now, this packet error rate and we are very familiar uh, while discussing earlier, uh, while you have studied earlier in uh, B tech that is uh, the B E R, bit error rate in digital communication uh, instead of uh, signal to noise ratio, we call bit error rate of the demodulator that defines the quality how many bits are in error out of so many bits. So, when a packet size is defined in a binary symmetric channel 1 minus B E R to the power packet size and 1 minus of that quantity is packet error rate. So, this is a simple relation for packet error rate to B E R and based on the size of the packet. And of course, B E R is based on our modulation and uh, that is proportional to the error function, uh, complementary error function and the, the energy per symbol by noise power density E s by n naught. I have called energy plus symbol uh, that is it could be energy per bit also. So, E b by n naught or E s by n naught whichever way you take it. So, B r is proportional to this. Now, uh, this uh, complementary error function will depend on uh, the type of modulation what you use etcetera, but this E s by n naught is actually talking to us about the, the energy per bit or energy per symbol that is the corresponding to the signal power and this is noise power density. So, this is what is important to us. So, if this degrades B r degrees, if B r degrees P r degrees. So, there is a relation between E s by n naught or E b by n naught to the P e r. Let us see the other way uh, um, uh, make it a little more clearer that is our C by n we were discussing how much carrier power is received and how much noise power we have received C by n. 
Now, C actually is a total average carrier power, you see, that is per symbol multiplied the bit uh, symbol rate or per bit multiplied by the bit rate, E s multiplied by R s, here R s is symbol rate or E b energy per bit multiplied by R b, in that case it will be b. So, these two multiplied gives us the C, that is carrier power, average carrier power and N naught is noise power by the bandwidth. So, this, this is multiplied with bandwidth, you get C by N, that is N, N is equal to N 0 into bandwidth. So, I can rewrite C by N in terms of E s by N naught R s and bandwidth as E s by N naught multiplied by R s multiplied by 1 by bandwidth. Okay. Now, so E s by N naught is very important and uh, correspondingly the C by N naught will be affected. So, let us talk at C and N. Now, atmospheric impairments are attenuation due to precipitation of hydrometeors uh, that is um, um, rain, snow, hail, ice, droplets, etcetera. Effect is uh, absorption and scattering. Uh, you can see that it can absorb and depending since it is a different media uh, that is from free space suddenly it has come or from air suddenly it has another medium has come. So, from the surface of that particular medium it will scatter depending on the rainfall rate and raindrop size, uh, we are mainly dominating thing is rain we will see and uh, this the loss that is absorption will also depend on at what elevation angle and polarization it is coming. We will see a little more detail on that and many models exist, people try to do model because this is a statistical phenomenon. So, many raindrops are there, it is not deterministic and uh, the rate of appearing the raindrops in front of the signal is also changing the rain rate. So, there are many models exist to estimate the average attenuation and that is done on annual basis and the location with a known rain rate. So, rain rate is uh, related to the attenuation, uh, people have done lot of modeling, but this is a very long term basis annual basis. Now, how much is the attenuation that is called depth, fed depth, I am using the word fed here, the fed depth are presented as a function of time of percentage, uh, time percentage, we will see a curve and we will understand uh, that. Uh, first let us look at the raindrops, when rain is uh, ideally created it is a sphere of uh, water drop, when uh, it is coming down because of its weight to the ground, because of the air pressure it may take a different form, maybe a ellipsoid. So, in the ideal case let us take a rain as a ellipsoid, it may tilt at different direction based on the uh, wind speed, wind direction, wind speed etcetera. Let us take a simply a, a spheroid which is a rain drop and it is a major axis minor axis of that we take and let us say there is a E vector that is the electromagnetic vector E field is falling on that rain drop falling at a particular angle. So, this is E in E vector which is coming into the raindrop, there will be some scattering when the transition takes place, but what happens inside the raindrop? This raindrop shape is different, one side it is a major axis side it is more water and less water in the minor axis side. So, if I resolve this E in vector into two components that is horizontal component here let us take it is horizontal and a vertical component E v is this much and E horizontal, the horizontal component is more than vertical component in this case in this particular angle when it is entering. Now, just look at it that is that E h part will get C more water content. So, as water absorbs electromagnetic energy it will uh, be reduced more compared to the minor axis side that is E v. So, uh, let us say E h is reduced to this much, whereas E v is reduced to this much. Now, this resulting two vector when the, uh, the electromagnetic wave comes out of the raindrop will have a different amplitude and different location. So, E out amplitude is different than E in amplitude and there is a theta rotation of the E vector. 
So, you can see there is a absorption and polarization change and because of the polarization change also there is absorption. Absorption is obviously uh, is there because of that only the whole thing is happening. So, this general type of diagram showing you that the absorption and depolarization both are happening depending on the shape, shape and size of the raindrop and the direction at which angle the input incident E vector is. So, hope this has given some clarity to you. Now, there is uh, another thing what we get familiar how do you measure the measurement is uh, generally available is called rain rate and rain rate uh, can be modeled uh, in terms of the diameter of the raindrop average diameter d d is average diameter of the raindrop the velocity of this raindrop through which it is going towards the earth that is the precipitation uh, velocity n d is the drop size distribution that is in a one cubic meter how many such raindrops are there. So, that is the density of uh, the raindrops. So, every uh, either cubic meter or cubic uh, centimeter whichever way you uh, take the unit uh, cubic millimeter whichever way you take uh, there is a distribution which will vary from uh, spatially which will vary place to place. So, uh, the model relation is the rain rate is equal to 0 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 3 pi and the integration of raindrop diameter cube velocity of raindrop and the drop size distribution that will be available in millimeter per hour and this is a measurable quantity what is measured our uh, meteorological departments what they announce the measure and many other agencies also they measure over area how many millimeter of rain fall has happened in an hour. So, uh, actually they do it in a different way, but whatever announcement they make that is millimeter per hour. So, many millimeter of raindrop per hour it has happened. So, this gets recorded and this model is available that is called rain rate. So, rain rate unit is millimeter per hour and a model like this is available. Now, uh, it is states like that R 0.01 of 40 millimeter per hour what is the meaning of that this 0.01 percent of time of a average year every year rain is not same rain rates are not same. So, year is 365 days then multiplied by 24 hours. So, in the average year a 0 0.01 percent of the time this 40 millimeter per hour rain rate has exceeded it might have rained at some place only for few minutes 50 millimeter per hour which is more than 40, 44, 40 millimeter per hour and other some other time half an hour for th uh, for 40 millimeter per hour. So, like that those whole year uh, if you cumulatively add them and then uh, you can find the 0 0.01 percent of the time that is 0 0.01 percent of 365 days multiplied by 24 hours uh, that is during that much time you can calculate that how many how many hours it is or how many minutes it is. So, for that much time cumulatively in a average year rain rate has exceeded 40 millimeter per hour. I repeat R 0 0.01 of 40 millimeter per hour is the cumulative percent of time in a average year when the rain rate has exceeded 40, 40 millimeter per hour it may be 50. So, therefore, for 0 0.001 percent of the time and for less percent of the time it might have exceeded 50 millimeter per hour. Hmm. So, it is normally the meaning of this is like that this 0 0.01 percent of the time is generally accepted thumb rule. So, people normally refer rain rate as 40 millimeter per hour means it is 0 0.01 percent of time, but we can go to specifics that for 0 0.001 percent of time or 0 0.0001 percent of time it is for very short time. Uh, you can see that we might design a system where the attenuation which is happening that can be taken care for this much by time, but we may need a system where my failure or loss of signal should be much less time. So, I should look for a rain rate 0.001 percent or 
much much lower than that. Okay. Now this the, you can see the curve here. Of course, uh, there are three uh, different frequencies. That is 12 gigahertz, 20 gigahertz, and 40 gigahertz. Three curves are shown, and uh, for these three curves, the total percentage of the time of average year in the x-axis and the attenuation due to rain in dB is just plotted. Let us take any one of them. Let us take the um, very uh, dominant one, let us say 40 gigahertz one, uh, which is this uh, blue line. Uh, you can see that 1 percent of the average year of the time, that is 3.65 days, the attenuation is 5 dB, whereas 0 0.01 percent of the average year, which is 0.365 days, means it is only 0.365 multiplied by 24 hours. So, that many minutes uh, the rain rate has uh, is uh, for this rain rate you have attenuation of 20 dB. So, this is much more than uh, for a longer uh, for a longer duration of time. So, for a short duration time there may be burst of rain heavier rain. So, your attenuation during that time is much more for longer duration time the burst of heavier rain for short duration are all accumulated together you can have a lower attenuation. So, what your quality of service that means how much time I can give a guaranteed service that my, my at, uh, system will not fail will not go below uh, the signal to noise ratio or carrier to noise ratio level uh, you can determine and accordingly that much attenuation sh you should uh, protect. So, these are the meaning. You can see that uh, KU band, which is very common band as we were take talking 12 gigahertz, it is uh, 0 0.01 percent of the time is roughly more than uh, slightly more than 5 dB. So, we stop here for the timing and we will continue this discussion in the next period. Thank you.